Konami is famous for arcade games. So what's strange is when it comes to 8-bits, and in particular, the Amstrad CPC, is that instead of using other software houses to convert their licensed games onto home computers, Konami sometimes produced its own conversions. I believe Jailbreak was the first to the humble Amstrad CPC. But enough of that, let's take a look at Konami games on the Amstrad. This is the legendary Le Mans racetrack. Wet Le Mans on the Amstrad CPC is a superb endurance race game. And like with the ZX Spectrum version, it matches the arcade in all but speed. There's plenty of tough turns and crazy drivers to keep you going round in circles for days. It's not quite 24 hours of blood, sweat and gears, but unlike Outrun on the Amstrad CPC, it's worthy of its legendary reputation. Typhoon is a respectable conversion of the arcade. Graphics aren't its strong point, and it does start off dull and slow. It's a nice try of trying to cut an arcade game down to an 8-bit. There's not really any great depth to the game, and I think the same holds true for the arcade original. It plays slightly faster on the ZX Spectrum, Fun, but lacking in the long term. Every once in a while, as a kid, uh, I got a game that I just couldn't wait to get home and play all evening. Sadly, these types of games uh, need lots of work in the sound department. I've played the NES version as well, and whilst that's better, the Amstrad CPC version isn't miles apart. So while the NES version has the edge, I kid you not when I say the Amstrad CPC version shouldn't be ignored. There's no doubt that this is playable and addictive, and there's an awful lot of challenge. Back in the day, this one kept me going, and in that sense, it's a cracking game, and I still play it today. And what I also like about this game is it's not just a straight port from another computer, They've actually thought about the Amstrad's capabilities in the colour department and delivered a cracking arcade conversion. The arcade game had fantastic graphics and sound. Not surprisingly, the 8-bit micro, like the humble Amstrad, just can't convert the game properly. The game as it stands is good, uh, but anyone expecting the arcade game back in the day would have been sorely disappointed. In my humble opinion, it's a hurried and careless conversion, but still surprisingly playable and highly addictive. And I can understand why Amstrad Action gave this one an AA rave. The thing that initially stands out and is most disappointing is that the game doesn't scroll, it flicks. This was essential back then to keep the game playable, otherwise it's an enjoyable run and gun that will keep you occupied for a while and prove reasonably tough to complete. We've got large bright colourful graphics, it has that addictive quality that makes it instantly appealing. I really like the sound effects as well. And you can even up the authenticity by playing a rendition of the arcade soundtrack in Amstrad Stereo. All in all, a playable arcade conversion for your Amstrad CPC. On your mark. Hyper Sports on the Amstrad CPC doesn't get close to the arcade original. The in-game sound effects are poor. These are the sounds from the arcade original. It's enjoyable for what it is, even despite the blocky graphics that are tacky of the first degree. In fact, the graphics feel like they are from a lesser computer. More variation in the scenery would have been nice as well. What's weird is I know it's nowhere near the arcade original, but I definitely kept playing it and uh, I played it quite often. I quite enjoyed it as a game, 
uh, it's easy to get into with uh, a good level of difficulty I'm not sure it lives up to the Amstrad Action hype I mean fair play to them it was January 1986 but 88% hmm I just want to compare the Commodore 64 version to the Amstrad CPC here it looks pleasant enough on the Amstrad CPC but you'll notice that the clay only comes from the left on the Amstrad where it comes from both directions on the C64. It's no biggie but when comparing against the other 8-bit conversions it almost always comes out last as a result. Not a brilliant arcade conversion but still kind of alright to play. I did play the arcade original as well. I kind of wondered what all the excitement was about. The challenge may keep you going and once you've got extra equipment it can get quite interesting. It looks very blocky but the animation is fair and the movement is quick and the gameplay is difficult. Why such a small screen though? I don't remember the arcade original being that easy but the Amstrad CPC version, well, um, I think it takes it to a whole new level of difficulty. And whilst that might put off the casual gamer, I found this one really addictive. And it was Konami themselves that programmed this for the Amstrad CPC. So in closing, I actually like this. And if you're up for a challenge, go for it. Oh my god, this looks awful. I used to spend many a night uh, trying to win at this one. The odd beep and a little jingle are the only sounds you'll hear. And rest assured, it's no world class leaderboard. Still, it's a game of golf, so there's lots of strategy and thought required. I mean, I look at it now, and the graphics are pitiful. But once upon a time, a long, long time ago, I played the Jehovah Witness out of this. Whilst the gameplay can be a bit frustrating and the graphics and sound effects will make you ill, it's a great little two player game believe it or not. Where it fails is that it hasn't stood the test of time. For me personally it's fair to piddling. Warning though I'm a golf fanatic. This one drove me crazy to start with because the action is a little bit too slow and it's too easy to get killed. The only real technique for surviving is to trundle slowly along from desk to desk and then dealing with uh, each desk one at a time and this kind of makes it a tortuous process and destroys the whole point of an arcade game for me. The game's also a bit blocky, but there's a good use of colour. Sound effects are nothing to write home about. There's nothing innovative to make it really stand out. I mean, I say this with a heavy heart. It's boring. I think Ocean Software, or Imagine, were taking the mickey. If you want a good fast-paced arcade game, then sadly this isn't the one. It looks and feels badly programmed and for me it's very disappointing. The first thing I notice is that there's a good use of colour but decisively dodgy average animation and although it's quite colourful it's in a tacky sort of way. I don't think there's any sound to speak of. Uh, the music is good but it just repeats over and over and over. I think I'd have preferred just a good assortment of spot effects. So it's easy to get straight into the action. The playing area seems a bit cramped, but there's a good array of obstacles and dangers in your way. 
which doesn't help things because the collision detection isn't great. And because of this and the other things mentioned, it becomes a tough nut to crack. If you can put up with all that horrible chunkiness though, <laughs> um, you have a large and difficult game here. So as for the gameplay, there are some vicious timing issues, but um, not bad really. I suppose better animation, more colour uh, and a bigger playing area would have been very much welcomed. This one does grow on you though, and I think if you liked the arcade original, you'll definitely like this. And the control of your ship is brilliant. I don't know what it is, this game loses a lot. I don't know what it is, um, Just it might be the reduced detail. But it plays fine though, um, and I suppose if I'm hard pushed it looks okay. Oh boy, another arcade conversion down the tubes. It's a great game in the arcade, shame about the implementation uh, on the Amstrad. Basically a specy port. I really detest this game. The graphics are mediocre at best and the sound effects are abysmal. The gameplay is slow and overcomplicated. And look at that tiny cramped small window. It is possible to get into the game, but on the whole it's disappointing and I, I, I wouldn't bother. Not even a good try. Sorry, no cigar. Don't ask me why. I absolutely love this game. It grows on you. The more you play this game, the more addicted you'll become. The scrolling is decent and smooth. Uh, the sound effects and the music playing uh, is pleasing. And the game's playable. And it has that pickup element as well to it. So it comes highly recommended from me, even though it doesn't look that way. Don't get me wrong, it's not all it could have been and the collision detection can seem way off at times but for me it's an enjoyable game that every time I play it it brings a smile to my face so it's a good conversion uh, with many original touches and in a few areas I actually prefer it to the arcade original I'm not really sure what to say about this one it came out on the game set and match 2 I can't see a release outside of this compilation. Ocean were responsible for this one. But it has to be said, it's probably mm, the worst of the Konami games uh, converted to the Amstrad CPC. I mean, this is um, Ocean's Outrun. So how anybody can have a go at US Gold over Ocean, I'll never know. This was a really popular game in the arcade and I remember always having a go on it and there was sometimes a queue. When you compare it to that of the arcade original, it's like they haven't even made the effort or it's unfinished. And then to rub salt into injury, just when you've got over the shock and finished crying and wiped your eyes, the game's over and it just loops. I'm not having a go at the programmer by the way. So probably a rush job. Who knows what the circumstances were, but shame on you, Ocean, for even thinking about releasing this. By the end of 1985, everyone thought they'd seen all there was to see from a combat game. And then came Konami's Yee Kung Fu. We got fantastic colourful graphics, eight very different opponents, it was fun, there was music, but above all, it was exciting. This one had it all. The only problem with YR Kung Fu is you won't be able to stop playing. And no matter the version, if like me, you'll still be playing some 30 years later. Now I hope you don't mind. I need to visit an old friend of mine, Blues. Wish me luck, I'm gonna need it. The best Amstrad CPC game I've ever seen. Another Turtles game on the Amstrad, and this one is even better. Run, jump, pop.
punch and hit. This one is just so playable, you just won't want to stop. Naturally, this doesn't hold a candle to the arcade original, but on its way down to the Amstrad, apart from the music, they didn't leave much out. It's one of my favorite games from Konami, and it's one of my favorite arcade conversions from Imageworks. I pretty much love it on this and all the other arcade conversions, including the arcade original, and still play it today. Well, this one needs no introduction. Combat Score was a fantastic game in the arcade, and it was just as good on the Amtrad CPC. In fact, this could easily be my favorite Konami game on the Amstrad. Without question, it's my favorite Waggler. I remember thinking, my god, these graphics are absolutely stunning on the Amstrad. I love how they used Mode Zero throughout. Of all the events, the arm wrestling was probably, well, maybe the weakest of the lot, but still essential. I was never any good at it. Combat score was like track and field, only this time, you're in the army. Combat score was also known as boot camp and was converted to the Commodore 64. Uh, ZX Spectrum and the PC oddly enough I've played the Amstrad CPC version through to completion and I have no cause for complaint I'd probably bemoan the lost days and weeks had I noticed them go by what a wonderful game thanks Konami uh, and thanks Ocean Software the MSX version is absolutely brilliant I really like it and the ColecoVision version is really good as well. The Amstrad version is the same, but slower. It's not a great game. It won't win any awards on the Amstrad CPC, but it's not a rubbish game either. You can actually do a flying kick. I just didn't do it on the video. In fact, I agree entirely with the sentiments from Amtix back in 87. I'm sure I remember completing this game, but don't quote me on that. I think it might have been one of those where I found a cheat in the end. I do think people are overly harsh about this one, but I guess at the end of the day it had a lot to live up to. With a little bit more care, it could have been brilliant. So that brings us to the end. Konami games on the Amstrad CPC are a real mixed bag. Some are an absolute masterpiece, others a complete travesty. But we always have to remember, it could have been a lot worse. Until next time, Tarara bit! <laughs>